Hello everyone, my name's King, and today we are going to be building SSTO space stations. Or at least I'm going to be telling you how to build one, and if mine blows up I'll just explain that I'm distracted by recording and it's all fine. Now you may be wondering, why not just build a regular space station, like assemble it in orbit like NASA does? Well, it's actually very difficult, and to come get the idea across a bit better, Here's a short clip of someone that is totally not me, trying it for the first time. So, roll that clip. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh jeez. <laughs> Why? Why me? Okay. Which is the one that's aiming at the thing? I don't know what I'm doing. Aim at the target. I'm not even going to- I'm... Nope. What are you- What- What- What am I looking at? Where- Where am I go- No! This guy! Toward target. Look toward target. It's not that hard. This shouldn't be this difficult. How do I- Do I- Ooh! Ooh! So yeah, as you can see, it's very difficult, or at least very frustrating t to do first time. So an easy workaround is to just launch it all at once. What can go wrong? A lot of stuff. But that's besides the point. It's Kerbal Space Program. Explosions are bound to happen, and in fact, they are mandatory. So let's get right into it, shall we? So, if it loads, loading times, curses, okay. So, I actually have right here a mock-up space station. Just a quick little design, nothing too major. This is just to give you an example of what you can do. You can build literally whatever kind of space station you want, it shouldn't really affect it too much. Now one thing would be to put a fairing around it, but you don't really need to do that, you just have to brute force it and it should be fine. So the way you get a space station into orbit is through lots and lots of boosters, which shouldn't be that much of a surprise to be honest, that's how you get literally everything into orbit. So I'm going to put a decoupler in between these, and then taking whatever kind of tank you want, just attach it to the sides in between, like so. It's best to have multiple tanks instead of one giant tank, mainly because there are no tanks big enough for like a whole space station, but also that way you can get multiple thrust and more fuel. And overall, it's a smart idea. So, I'm just going to pillar down a bit. I'm going to actually go out a bit as well. Make sure the staging's actually correct. We are going to do this. Everything should be okay. Now you just need to throw struts everywhere. Uh, 
that way, it should be okay. And even going to auto strut to heaviest part. Auto strut is like an advanced tooltips thing. You can get it by look sorting through the settings. It's a great way to make sure everything doesn't just explode on impact. Now I'm not going to put any... Actually, scratch that. Scratch what I was about to say. I will actually put some aerodynamic nose cones on this stuff. It's not going to do much, actually. But, uh... I guess to drive home the fact that this is not going to be pretty whatsoever, it's practically all functionality. Now, maybe a little bit more struts. So one last thing. I'm actually going to do a bit of asparagus, asparagus staging, just a tiny bit. And even actually going like this, so that these boosters share the fuel and these drain into the other three. That way it's a bit more efficient and we could get a little bit more mileage out of this. Yeah. I think that should work. Now then, let us launch and blow up. So SS, it habita SAS, full throttle. Activate all the engines, and we are not going anywhere. So, if this happens, and it will happen a lot, just add more engines. The majority of what's going to be going on is just stuff like this, where you just tweak the design a tad bit over and over and over again. Adding more boosters, changing up the design, adding even more boosters. Mainly just a lot of boosters, to be honest. It's not doing anything. 